Listen, now ColourPop is one of those brands that either like you love what they're doing right now in terms of their collections, their products, or you've kind of had enough of them. You know what I mean? You're kind of over it. Or you love what they're doing and you love their products, but at the same time, you kind of wish they would just stop. They would just slow down. <laughs> they have absolutely been the subject of some controversial issues over the past few years. But what I really want to get to, the point of this video is, could their own refusal to listen to their customers or the consumer be the downfall, the potential downfall of ColourPop? And don't get me wrong, ColourPop is a brand that I really, really love. I really like their products, but I have also been disappointed by this brand with their like limited collections. And so have a lot of people and they're very vocal about it, but Colourpop don't seem to be learning. So let's talk about it today. Please do consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm. If you don't know what to comment, comment algorithm. I was trying to think of something clever, but I can't. And also I have to give a warning. I'm still in my crusty eyelid era here and I've used eye primer on it. And it's gone really dry. So apologies for that situation. Anyway, if you're unfamiliar with ColourPop, I know some people in the UK might not be overly familiar because it is quite difficult to get here. And they do ship, but you have to spend a certain amount and then pay shipping, which is fine. You have to pay shipping, but I think it's over like £50. But if you are unfamiliar with a brand, ColourPop is an American brand, despite them spelling colour the English way <laughs> with the U, because we love a U. So the company itself was founded in 2014 by Laura and John Nelson. They are brother and sister, which is cute. I think that's nice. Family business. So they actually co-founded a company called Seed Beauty. You may be familiar or heard of Seed Beauty before. It's almost like a sister company or a child company of their dad's company, Spatz Laboratories. So there's a lot of family companies and um, laboratories, let's say. And they actually came under fire themselves in 2016 by their employees, the actual people who worked there, who compared working for the company, they said it was similar to working in a sweatshop. Not that I'm sure they understand the actual horrific conditions of sweatshop, but that's how they described it. And that gives me the image of, you know, constantly working, not many breaks, underpaid, whatever. Despite having, you know, celebrities like Kylie Jenner come and visit the lab, for her brand when it first launched, you know, with smiles and everything like that. People said that was kind of like a mirage, not a mirage, yeah, a mirage. No, what's it called? Like a, um, a, a facade. So I didn't know this. I didn't know that link, you know, LinkedIn, right? Where people put their um, portfolios up and it's like, I worked for something for this many years. People can actually review companies and brands that they have worked for in the past. But former employees have been on there saying things like, um, oh, let me read this, the pay is very minimal for the amount of work that is required with no benefits. And as I said, people had described it as a sweatshop. It was terrible work experience, but I wish I do not have again. Wrote someone else, they described it as extremely uncomfortable to work there. And they said it's hard to work with um, other employees as they're all kept separate which which I don't I don't understand that because if you're working like I don't know I've never worked there but I'm sure if, if you're working like factory setting aren't you all like in the same room but also people described it as unclean and dirty which isn't really what you want to hear from a place that's making stuff that goes on your face you know these are just claims by the way from people that no longer work for company people were saying that they were becoming ill from the makeup they were producing the color pop makeup they were producing this isn't proven in any way though by the way it is from past employees who no longer work there and there are actually loads and loads and loads of happy employees past employees that work here including someone who was fired and left a positive review they were like oh i wish it was a great place to work i wish i had just actually done work so i didn't get fired but i would do anything to work for again which i think is fair and nice that's a nice thing to do spats labs um the other one seed beauty said none of this is true this is not a true situation it's all fabricated all our factories you know align with the law it's the least you can ask for isn't it really <laughs> i just wanted to pop that in there because when i was researching i was like oh that's interesting i never heard of that but i don't think as somebody who has used color pop makeup for a long time i don't feel i don't feel ill <laughs> <laughs> or like in any danger. So I'm good. The brands that come under Seed Beauty, as you can imagine, is Colourpop. And they're kind of like brands that are already in Colourpop. So Fourth Ray, which is like their skincare kind of situation. And then Soul Body, which kind of just looks like Fourth Ray and Colourpop together. I don't know why they don't just put them all under Colourpop. You know what I mean? It may, oh, to me, it's all Colourpop anyway. And of course they did. Kylie's brand when it first launched and they did um, Kim Kardashian's makeup brand when it first launched. They're no longer 
together. They, they parted way and actually there were some lawsuits, which I'm not gonna get into because I'm sure there's plenty of videos you can watch about the lawsuits. I'm not a law person. I don't know what it means. I can't sit here and pretend, uh, I can't stop looking at my lip. It is so glossy and, and shot. I just love it, sorry. Okay. Where am I, what am I doing? So Colourpop, I remember, right, when uh, being in the UK, before makeup was like as huge as it is now online, I remember seeing Colourpop online and being so jealous. The US, Canada used to get everything before we did. And uh, Colourpop was a brand we couldn't get here yet. And I just used to love it. I used to see it online. I used to see um, the Super Shocks and be like, I need that, I want that. I remember thinking I want to go to the US so I can buy some stuff. But I remember seeing it online early, early, early into like the social media media kind of makeup world. So they actually launched in 2014, right? And this is where people wished that Colourpop got back to, because when they first launched, they were known for being colorful. Not just like crazy colors, stuff you can use, stuff you can put into your, you know, everyday routine. Amazing textures, but they really used the power of influencers. Uh, they really use the power of influencers to get on the map and it did work because they became an incredible, incredible brand, a very well-known brand very quickly. And going back to their textures, I still adore their Super Shock formula because it was like nothing we'd ever seen before. Yes, we've seen like water powders, like the loose ones, but I'd, we'd never seen like this, like, <laughs> I think he said mulch, but like this a wet kind of cream that was metallic and went on like metal and was so beautiful and lightweight. It was just such an incredible formula. It still is, I love their Super Shock. Their bronzers, their blush, their highlight formula, Super Shock. Um, and of course her eyeshadows. I think her, I had to sort through them the other day. I have loads of them. I was like, you know, you've had some of these for about five years and you can't put them on your eye because shit's gonna happen to you, you know what I mean? And that formula was exciting, because like I said, it's something we hadn't really seen before. Maybe you weren't a complete stranger to it, but the average consumer hadn't seen something like that. And as a, you know, as a makeup artist, you can probably mix something up like that to get that result. Um, but to, for, to buy it just out the shop, great. So Colourpop started selling it on their own website, but very quickly went into Sephora. And I think back then, especially for a company to go into Sephora so quickly is kind of like a statement as to how well they're doing, right? Sephora are very fussy about who they have to a point where it's like, yeah, we, we will get rid of you if you don't make enough money. There's a lot more about the history of Colourpop and how they rose to become such a well-known company. But obviously this video is about their potential downfall. And I want to talk about it because it's a concern a lot of people have had for the brand, for the company, um, and, and people who love the brand as well. You know when you really, really like a brand, but they just keep doing shit and you're like, stop doing shit. Stop, stop acting like this. Why are you acting like this? And you just want to grab them and shake them and be like, listen, listen, just read through your comments just for one second and see what people really, really want. So Colourpop seemed to have, um, oh, I need to say this as well. I just did a video on Colourpop new launches last week. Um, and it seems to have slowed down at the beginning of a year anyway. But Colourpop seems to have this very unfortunate habit of releasing products new products, new launches, very quickly and excessively. It's like a makeup revolution rate, you know what I mean? It's like to a point where an Instagram account, like Trend Mood, for example, who share new launches, will share a new Colourpop launch, and people will be like, oh, not again, not again, can we just have the something back? Can we just have this discontinued product back? So I want to dive into their releases, right? I've split them into three categories, and perhaps why these individual categories of what they're doing could be leading to that downfall, right? The three, the three categories, categories, the regular range. Products and items that the brand offer all the time, not limited editions. The limited edition releases, now these are obviously limited edition releases, more, more so seasonal that the brand offer throughout the year. And then we have the licenses, right? So a license that they have purchased to use with their products. Disney, My Little Pony, Twilight, and of course the extremely disappointing that I will never get over, Sailor Moon releases. So the, the regular range, right? These are things like, there's bronzers, blushes, super shock highlights. There's also eyeshadow palettes, um, the gel pencils, which are the best formula eyeliner pencils ever, in my opinion. And it is also like more complexion, like foundations and stuff like that, which I don't actually think they get enough credit for because they do do some great products in terms of foundation and concealer. They are incredible value for money like straight up, we all know this. They also do bundles of these regular line products. You can get all the gel liners for a discounted price. And I actually do this when they launch a new product. They'll do a bundle of all the products for a discounted price. 
uh, versus buying all of them individually. Um, but they also do sets of eyeshadow palettes. Like they do the, the set um, colors, you know, the one palette is green, one palette's blue, one palette's yellow. And I have them and I really like them. And I think they're such a good idea for someone who's just getting like their own makeup kit started or for themselves. You have all these eyeshadows, all these liners that match the shadows, you know? All these lipsticks that have a matching lip liner. Glosses, there is a really good build up, kind of build your own kit kind of situation. I can't get over how drunk, look at that. Isn't that awful? Word of warning, don't use, you know, like a makeup eraser cloth. Don't go like this on your eye with one of them to remove a stain from an eyeshadow. <laughs> None of you will do that. I did it because I'm stupid. So they do these bundles, they do these products that are amazing price points. This is where ColourPop really, really shine for me because these are really good, good products for a really good price. They work, they'll work on anyone. I just think they, and I know that's a bold claim, but they really are their strongest point in in my opinion and the bold colors and the bright packaging off these normal range products do so so well it, it does surprise me often when people show how much love they have for ColourPop if I mention a product and how much we agree on it and on how such good quality they are because there is a lot of shit talking ColourPop recently but it seems like as well ColourPop went through some stages of forgetting about these products, not restocking them quick enough for people, trying to get that, what is that, um, Super Shock highlighter, money something? Something about money, there was a point in time when no one can get it, but Colourpop were doing new release, new release, new release, and everyone was like, we just want this highlighter back, please. Despite people asking for these very particular products back from their normal range, Colourpop had nothing to say but releasing new products. Strike one, strike one of not listening to their consumers. But what were ColourPop releasing instead, right? Their limited edition throughout the year collections. Now these, as I said, have seemed to slow down very slightly, but oh my God, was it not exhausting at one point? Tell me if you disagree, if you think it's slowed down or not, but in my mind it has. And I'm not talking about just seasonal, like Christmas, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, what's another one? New Year, you know? Not just those things, but it, all the in-betweens as well. Colourpop were releasing something, it feels like every single week. Now, I am currently on Colourpop's PR. I have been for a good few years. Um, and I do have a discount code <laughs> if you want to use it down below. But listen, we can complain about good things, right? I mean, you know, we have friends who we love, but at the same time, there's some things they do that you don't want them to do, you know? But yes, I'm on their PR, and there was a point in time where it was kind of like a running joke with me and my partner that a new Colourpop box would turn up, because it'd be like, Colourpop again, because it was weekly. It got to a point where it was almost every single week. And I'm very grateful for PR, don't get me wrong. And there's always something in the new collections that I do want, like a Super Shock or something like that. But some of the releases became a bit samey, like they were they were very similar to each other. They were doing like mini collections very frequently based on a stone or a flower. So you'll get like a daisy collection and a rose collection and then you get like a quartz collection and a diamond, you know what I mean? Like it was that kind of thing that was like, oh, I don't need these. And they were, they were really beautiful products, but they were kind of all the same, you know, they would have a lip oil, two blushes, a, two super shots, and the palette. And the palettes really weren't very exciting, I'll be honest with you, they were very bland. And there wasn't really much feedback on the products either, the collections. People weren't testing them, people weren't reviewing them, because it was the same stuff over and over again. And it got to a point where everyone was like, give us a break, please. I don't know what was going on, but I swear even Colourpop at one point made a joke where they were like, we're not slowing down just yet, here's another collection. But literally people were saying, even fans of the brand, we don't want this, we need you to stop for just a moment. And yes, you don't have to buy every single product, but it gets to a point where people are concerned about how Colourpop are producing these products, how often, and the effects that that constant creation is having on everything, the environment, their workers, their staff, you know, all this kind of stuff. Strike two of not listening to their consumers not slowing down, not listening again. And when they did release something that was exciting, a licensed deal for some people, Twilight, for example, wasn't exciting for everyone. I didn't give a shit about the Twilight thing. Um, I actually did a giveaway with it because I really wasn't that bothered by it. And a friend took the palette because she loved Twilight. Oh, people were disappointed. People were so disappointed. People were unhappy with a Twilight one. People were unhappy with... Um, some Disney ones I've been a little bit disappointed in. If you don't know, I'm a huge Disney fan, yes. It disappoints me because, actually no, I'll talk about it in a minute, because let's talk about the Sailor Moon collections. We have to talk about the Sailor Moon collections. You think of Sailor Moon, 
For those who don't know, Sailor Moon is the best anime in the whole world ever. And it's just the, the things you could do with the stories, the arcs, everything within this universe of Sailor Moon, quite literally the universe, is incredible. Each character is assigned to a planet. You have different groups of these people and, and just the colors you could have done could have been phenomenal. The colors on the people, Sailor Pluto, for example, who is one of the characters in Sailor Moon, these deep greens, we could have had a nice shift green that was like a green and red or green and deep red, you know? but yet they come out with these pastel, dusty, fusky palettes. Yes, there's some pastel within Sailor Moon. It's girly, it's girly, it's like, you know, but even the tones from it, from the cartoon itself, are quite deep. It, it isn't, it, if you looked at it without the branding, without the characters on it, you would be like, that does not remind me of Sailor Moon. If someone just to be like, does this look like Sailor Moon? You'd be like, no, shit, no, it doesn't. It was extremely, extremely disappointing. And I think if you're going to take a license for something like Sailor Moon, Twilight, where they have hardcore fans, you are gonna disappoint a lot of people if you don't do it right. And I have to be honest, some of the collections that came out, again, it was like Sailor Moon, for example, had a palette, two blushes, um, the first round, and then something else, which I can't remember. It was it was a similar build of everything else. When Lizzie McGuire came out, which I actually really liked that palette, it was the same kind of standard collection. Two blushes that looked very similar to all the other ones. You get two different pinks, um, a palette. It was, it, you know, they just, they just didn't listen again to their fans. Twilight was a huge disappointment for a lot of people because it was ghostly. It was ghostly. And it usually happens where the palettes do sell out, the collections do sell out quite quickly, but then when they come back, no one else is interested in it. You can buy a lot of their limited editions still on their website. They do actually do a Super Shock set, which is a Disney Princess one, which is actually phenomenal. Disappointing, very disappointing. Again, another case of them not listening to consumers. I think it is so important to listen to consumers because not for every brand, I'll be honest. Some people just need to shut up. But when you look at ColourPop and look at their releases and their first Sailor Moon collection was so disappointed when they released the mess of a second one, it's like, why are you doing this to us? Why do you hate us, ColourPop? So it's my opinion that people are tiring of ColourPop very quickly and it could lead to a potential downfall of the brand. One, because they aren't listening to their consumers in many different ways. They carry on with the brand in ways that consumers and people who are just watching the brand aren't happy with. And we don't live in a day and age where people need to use your brand. There are other brands available. The constant not listening to feedback as well. You can't release a chalky palette every time you do a license a license deal. You know what I mean? You can't have disappointed fans in your products. And the rapid way they are producing products is concerning for some people. If they just fixed a few things, had a few limited editions throughout the year, maybe two big license deals throughout the year, you know, it's <laughs> that'll be comfortable for a lot of people. But for a lot of people, it's uncomfortable to see the rate that they release things. Okay. I would love to know your opinions down below. As I said, ColourPop is a brand I really like. The quality of their products is incredible. And I feel like they're losing favor with people. So if anyone from ColourPop is watching this, please, please just listen to what people are saying. Because I need you to be around. Never take Super Shock away from me. Because I won't be happy. <laughs> All the gel liners. Okay. As I said, let me know your opinions down below. As always, I'd love to have a discussion on what you think of a brand also. Let ColourPop see it. Let's let's imagine in the comments we are writing a letter to ColourPop, begging them to listen. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for joining me. As I said, do consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.